is one of the biggest contemporary artists of today. She is a black woman who is now based in Brooklyn and her work really deals with these ideas that we have about race, gender, sexuality, and preconceived notions about black people, enslavement, then the history of violence against black bodies. She typically works with silhouettes, that's what you might know her from. I think specific to this exhibit, um, it's sort of a, a meta commentary about being an artist herself, um, so there's a lot of work here about uh, her experiences as an artist, specifically how maybe she's been exploited in the past as an artist. This exhibition came to be because it was organized by Dr. Katie Giha, who was my research advisor when I was an undergrad, and so the show to me is really about this legacy of enslavement and how it's represented in the South. I went to the University of Georgia, which is where Katie works and where Kara Walker grew up, and so the show for me re-examines a lot of the histories that I grew up with in the Atlanta area and how we examine these legacies of enslavement, how we talk about them today, and how we should talk about them moving into the future. This Kara Walker exhibit is something new. As I said, she typically deals with silhouettes. These are her watercolors, her gauche, her um, writings on paper. Uh, and in the gallery on the uh, other side of uh, this atrium, there is a uh, stop motion feature, a uh, 12 minute feature uh, created by Walker. This film is called Prince McVeigh and the Turner Blasphemies, and it's a counterpart to Kara Walker Back of Hand, which looks at the legacy of enslavement. The film really talks about the history of violence in the 20th century and crimes against black bodies. So, for example, the Oklahoma City bombing. Timothy McVeigh, and the murder of James Byrd Jr. Okay, so this work is called The Ballad of How We Got Here. It's my favorite artwork in the exhibition. I really like this piece because of the self-reflection it gets, and it was a piece that it was just made to be poetry and wording, and then Kay Walker added the artwork in it. So this is her part of pieces that came in, and I just think everything here has so much context to think about and and just to investigate. This these pieces have never been they have never been scholarly analyzed or anything, so it's our time to just feel it as what it interprets to your beliefs and your ideas and what you live for. So yeah. After this venue, the show is traveling to the Poetry Foundation in Chicago and I love looking at these massive text pieces really as these stream of consciousness poems that Walker created, and she creates these brilliant references to other artistic figures like Basquiat with his known crown symbol and the Samo, and she also references people that died around the time of the Black Lives Matter movement, like Ahmaud Arbery, who was killed in Georgia, and so I think that these works are so brilliant because of the text tie-ins and the way that she combines them with visual fragments are beautiful and engaging and really captivating. The show was originally curated by Katie Giha for University of Georgia, so they were able to discuss a bit more of the Antebellum South and the relevance of these pieces to the Antebellum South. This exhibit is equally as important for Georgetown given the school's history with slavery, the buying, selling, and trading of slaves. When we were altering the wall text that introduces the exhibition for Kara Walker Back of Hand, the only alteration that we really made was adding a line at the bottom of the wall text to address Georgetown's own history and legacy of enslavement because we wanted to think about how this exhibition is really important to this specific location, like why Georgetown? And so we wanted to acknowledge the legacy and the histories of enslavement at the school. I'm sure that a lot of you are familiar with the GU 272 project, and we've planned numerous public programs throughout the semester in partnership with the Center for the Study of Slavery and its Legacies. So we're really trying to acknowledge and discuss the weight of the legacy of slavery at this institution and with this venue. There are two things I hope people take away from this exhibit. The first is the importance of art on Georgetown's campus. Um, we have people who come in and they 
never realize that there's a gallery on this campus. People walk through Walsh all the time. We're right here. I recommend coming and seeing art and supporting art on campus and beyond just this gallery and the departments, but going to open mics and um, the senior art majors exhibits in the spring. Um, and the second thing that I would like people to take away from this exhibit, and this has more to do with the content of it, is kind of a reckoning of history, seeing and reading what Kara Walker has put forth and taking it into account of this school's own history as well as the history of America as a whole. I want people to consider how slavery is discussed in the present moment and how we should be talking about it in the future and what perceptions and stories have we been taught over time that actually aren't true? What legacies are we misremembering and what information can we further discover? We had this great public program here last week in partnership with Tudor Place and the Georgetown Art Museum Studies Program and also the Center for the Study of Slavery and its legacies where we had a conversation with descendants of folks that were enslaved at Tudor Place and other nearby sites like Mount Vernon and hearing those stories from direct descendants of their family legacies, it really puts into perspective how a lot of what we've been taught is incorrect and how we should be re-educating ourselves and re-examining those histories. Mm -hmm.